Hi, my name is Jim, and today we're going to create an embroidered patch and apply it to a garment in Clo. We're going to start by using Adobe Illustrator to create our layout of our patch. I've drawn uh, an oval here using the ellipse tool. And I'm going to make note of the size of this oval so that I can later use the uh, size for my pattern piece in Clo. The next thing I did was I typed my name and I chose a font. The next thing I'm going to do, and this is not something you have to do, is that I like to make a copy of my original artwork so that I can go back and use this if necessary. So I'm going to make a copy here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I am going to uh, select my oval and I'm going to put a zigzag around here so that it looks like it's stitched. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my ellipse, go to the effect menu, distort and transform, and choose zigzag. Next, I'm going to make sure that my type is selected, and I'm going to go to the Effect menu, down to Stylize, and choose Scribble. My Scribble options open up. If your preview is not on yet, check it to make sure that it is so that you can see what happens when you adjust these settings. I know by to start with how I want this to look, so I'm going to make very specific changes to these settings at the moment so that I can get my desired look. And what I have done here is created a basic background feeling that looks like it's been embroidered. We're going to be adding another layer to make sure that it has some dimensionality. I'm then going to click OK. Now what I'm going to do is put in some basic colors. I've already chosen some colors here in my uh, swatches. I have a background color for my background of my patch of my oval, which I'm going to also adjust in the color palette here to make it seem more like an off-white or a cream. I'm then also going to change the stroke of my ellipse to be a darker color. Uh, I'm choosing red to use as my uh, embroidery. And then I'm also going to use that same dark red as the fill color for my... Now here in our layer palette, we can see that we have our two pieces of artwork. What I'm going to do now is I am going to duplicate this layer by dragging it onto the new layer icon. The top artwork here, we're not going to need at this point because this is our reference. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the fill color from this copy of the background of the patch. I'm then going to change the stroke color around the outside of the patch to be a lighter red. I'm going to do the same thing for this fill color of the scribble here and change that to be the lighter red. Now what we need to do here is to make some changes to these two layers so that we can see what's going on underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my appearance menu which tells me everything that's going on with a selected object. So if I select my oval here, it tells me that this is a stroke, a one-point stroke with no fill, and it has a zigzag applied to it. This is my layer copy that I have going on here. So what I'm going to do is that I want these two layers to work together. So I'm actually going to go back to my initial layer and make my zigzag just a little bit wider. I'm going to use my stroke palette and make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to now turn back on my first layer and as we can see we're getting a tonal effect going on here. We want to do a similar thing here with our zigzag for our name 
So again, I'm going to click the name, and here it's telling me what I have going on. I have a scribble effect here. I'm going to click this scribble effect, and I'm going to change one setting here. I'm going to change the stroke width here in the line options to be rather than two point to be one point. And as you can see, we're now starting to see through our light layer down to our dark layer. Finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a blur to both the name and to the stroke so that when we send it, uh, we use it in Clo, it, it, it gives nice dimension. I'm then going to do the same thing on the stroke. Now what I'm going to use, I'm going to use my asset export panel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to easily export just this one small piece of my document. I make sure that my artwork is selected and I click on this new icon here, generate a single asset from the selection. And click export. It's then going to ask me where I want to export this. And I'm going to choose specifically this folder that says embroidered patch. Click select folder. It then tells me that this patch has been successfully exported. I'm now going to go to Photoshop and I'm going to open that asset. So here is the main artwork for my patch. I want to create two new files from this so that my patch will have dimension in CLO. I'm going to make sure that my layer is selected. I'm going to go to the filter menu, down to 3D, and choose Generate Normal Map. This dialog box will open. If you note in this window here, the contrast details, you have low, medium, and high options in relation to the three levels that will give you your dimension. I like to just make sure that there is a decent contrast between them so that I have a good feel for all. I'm simply going to click OK, and I now have a file that looks like this. This is my normal map. I'm now going to save this. I'm going to say save as, create a new file, which has the same name, but now says normal. I'm going to go back to the beginning here so that I have this file now. I am going to now create the displacement map. I'm going to use an embroidery texture which I have saved here, and I'm going to open this. I'm going to select it all, copy it. I'm going to paste this. So now I have two layers here. You can move this around if you decide that there's some areas that are better for your texture. I'm going to decide on this. And really quickly, I'm going to hide that layer so I can see what's going on here. I want to now select the areas that I want to mask out. The background of my patch, and I'm going to select the transparent area around the patch. If I now bring my embroidery back, we can see the selection here with the marching ants. I'm now going to say select inverse. So it is now selecting the embroidered area. I'm going to make sure that my embroidery layer texture is selected and I'm going to click add layer mask. 
I'm going to merge this layer down by selecting the texture, clicking the options menu and saying merge down. And very important, I'm going to go to the image menu, mode, and change the color mode to grayscale. A displacement map must be saved as a grayscale file. I'm now going to go to the file menu, save as again, and save this so that I know that it is the displacement file. So now we've switched over to Clo, and here is our garment that we want to apply our embroidery to. And we're going to apply this on the left side of our shirt here. In my 2D window, I'm now going to change my fabric to a monochrome surface just so that I can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to add an oval here using the internal polygon line tool oval that I created in Illustrator was four inches wide by one and three quarter inches high. I'm going to click here in my pattern piece and I can put those measurements into my width and height. Now I'm going to use my transform pattern tool. I'm going to right click and say clone as pattern. I'm now going to use the free sewing tool to sew my pattern piece to my internal shape. And superimpose it over the area where we want it to go. So now our pattern piece is applied to our garment. It is currently in the same fabric that the garment is in, but we can change that. You can change that by making a new fabric, which I have actually already imported this in. Now that our patch has been superimposed onto our garment, we can change the patch fabric to something new. I have my default fabric here. I'm going to apply that so that I have a basic shape here that I can see. And here is the folder where I have saved the three different versions of the patch artwork. There's the regular artwork, there is the normal map, and there is the displacement map. I am going to right click, and I'm going to say add as graphic. I'm then going to go over to my pattern piece, and I'm going to click. I get the option here of how big I want it to go, or where I want it to go. I'm going to say center, and click OK. So now my patch has been placed. I can select my patch using the or the transform graphic tool and I can move that around. Now I'm going to right click on this file and say add as graphic. I'm going to click within the pattern piece and it's going to ask me where I want this. I'm going to designate the center.
If we go to our render window, we will see that our patch does in fact look like a patch. The first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to select the pattern piece itself and make sure that the fabric that is applied to it is also selected. I'm then going to click on the color option in the property editor so that my color window opens up. I'm going to use the eyedropper to select the darker of the two reds. And there we can see that that has filled in the white edging on the patch. Then I'm going to use the transform graphic tool and I'm going to select my graphic. And as you can see now here in the property editor, it shows me information about this. There is the texture which is the oval patch that I've made. And I want to add the normal map and the displacement map. I'm simply going to drag the normal map into the normal open box and then do the same thing with the displacement map and drag it into the displacement open box. I'm going to go back to my render window and I'm going to refresh my render. You can work with the options here in the property browser if you'd like to increase or decrease any type of intensity or amount.